It's been about a year since I got this piece of amazing tech right here. And I've actually built my entire business to the point where it is today around this device right here. <laughs> So for some of you, oh, let me not use the Mac like that. For some of you who are new here, my name is Kip Jackson. I'm a filmmaker and aspiring cinematographer. Yeah, that's me. And I'm sure that this video right here will help you make a decision about this Mac. So if you can help your boy out by subscribing, it would mean a lot to me. And for those of you guys that have been a part of my channel for a while now, what's up? Let's get into it. Now, in the tech world, it's really easy to fall onto like this path of consumption. You got tech like this, this, this. Oh, the box is backwards. This. And you guys know your boy, this. It's always leading you to buy the newest camera, drone, laptop, phone, gimbal, etc. Now, me, I pride myself on really having not the latest tech, but the most useful and the most budget tech. See, I don't want to be held back by not having good and reliable tech, but I also don't want to be spending too much money and being burdened economically by buying the latest tech just because of the fact that it's new. I'm all about budget. This M1 Mac Mini is a lifesaver, both for your wallet and for your workflow. Is this worth it in 2022? You'll find out. So this computer comes in multiple models. So if you want to use it for more crazy things like coding or ex extreme color grading or maybe extreme editing, you would get a more higher end model of this. They start at $699 brand new on apple.com. You can get this refurbished at apple.com for around $575 or something like that. I'll put it up here, but you can also get this online with a simple Google search for less than $500 now, since this has been around for two years and the M2 is coming out shortly. Now here's my setup and no, I'm not saying it's the perfect go-to. I'm just trying to be as efficient and as budget as possible. My Mac only has 256 gigabytes in the SSD drive, which is the lowest you can get, but I got the highest amount of RAM that they offered, which is 16 gigabytes. I also edit off a Samsung T5 SSD card, which is around 500 gigabytes, which lets me be able to edit for a longer period of time and not eat away at the memory. There's a, there's an airplane going by right now. I live in upstate New York now and there's more airplanes than when I was in Long Island. Disclaimer, this comes with nothing but the Mac and the power cord. Now the ports and accessibility that this Mac mini offers are amazing. This comes with a power port, an ethernet port that's only eight gigabits, you can upgrade to 10 if you need to, two USB 3.0 slash Thunderbolt connections, an HDMI port, two USB 2.0 connections, and a headphone jack. You're gonna see a fan in there and you're really not even gonna hear it. Now you could upgrade this entire setup on the back here for $100, which is a steal. You can do that on your MacBook Pro for $400. To disbelief, I actually use the mouse and keyboard from Apple. Yeah, I know it's not ideal, but I love it. I'm really big on the minimalist look so that wireless, sleek, plain type of look is what I went for with this. So I kind of liked it and it's efficient. The battery lasts long. I have no complaints when it comes to that. Maybe in the future, I'll get an editing mouse, but I don't see myself getting one like that now. I also bought it used, which is a lot cheaper because it was aftermarket. If you guys are out there shopping for monitors and you want to see a video on the best monitors out today for content creators like myself, comment below and I'll do a video on it. This is a perfect at home setup and you can even bring this on the go too because it's really minimal. Now I'll also add some of the add-ons that I use in links below. On the screen, I'm gonna provide a list of the M1 Mac mini 2020 models. You can choose whichever tier you think you're gonna need, but this is the basic model, 699 with a little bit more RAM. You can see that here. With this computer over the past almost two years, I've run multiple programs. I run After Effects at the same time as Premiere, at the same time as Media Encoder. I use the Adobe Suite entirely. I don't really use Final Cut at all, so I think Final Cut will be even better because it's naturally Apple's product. I'm not waiting an extreme amount of time when I'm going to export my projects. I usually do weddings, short films, music videos, which have a lot of graphics and a lot of transitions and a lot of 4K footage and it works well with all that. When I go to edit this video, you won't even hear the fan go off at all. In two years, I've never heard the fan once. So if that's one of your things that bothers you, fan noise, you're good. I'm not one for benchmarks or anything like that, but this one does perform at the bottom when it comes to Apple products. M1 chips are super high quality, so you're really not gonna run into 
any errors with programming. As long as you're doing simple to slightly expert editing, you're not gonna really run into any problems. Now, when you start coding and trying to make the actual graphics yourself, maybe high quality gaming, then you're gonna run into some problems because it simply does not have the processing power. You're gonna wanna upgrade to the Mac Studio, which is around, I think it starts at $1,900, but I'll put that here. If you wanna see what this is capable of, capable, blah, 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 capable, capable of, Look at my previous video right here. We shot that on the A7 IV, we edited it in around two days and it came out smooth, all on Adobe Premiere. So my final opinions are, I think that this Mac Mini M1 in 2022 is 100% worth it. At $699 all the way up to $999, maybe even $1199, it's still a steal when it comes to comparing it to other desktop and even other Apple products. Till next time, it's your boy Kip Jackson, start somewhere. Peace.